Welcome back. A monumental day yesterday as the first COVID-19 vaccines administered just nine months after the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic. But there are still so many questions and concerns surrounding the vaccine. So joining us now to answer a few of those questions, Dr. Samantha Hill, president of the Ontario Medical Association. Good morning to you, Dr. Hill. Dr. Hill, hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Good morning. Excellent. Good morning. I want to start here with your reaction to seeing some of these shots. We were talking a little bit earlier about the vaccinations. And it, for me, when I watched it, it provided hope. But for you, from a medical uh, perspective, what does it mean for you? Oh, there's so many mixed feelings right now. So there's hope and there's relief and there's a sense of cautious optimism. But there's also a little bit of fear tinged in with that. And that's because I think a lot of people who are seeing these shots and who are hearing about the vaccines are feeling like, OK, it's over and it's not over yet. No, a lot of work ahead. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the vaccine itself, at least Pfizer's. It's, it's two doses. We've seen the Ontario government saying, listen, we're going to hold back. Uh, do first round, wait the 21 days and hold those supplies for that first round of people who were inoculated. Let's break down why it needs to be two. A lot of people are saying why two, because other, other vaccine candidates, some are one, some are stored at different temperatures. Why is there such a different, why is there such a discrepancy, I should say? So it all depends on how the vaccine has been created and how it's rolled out and how the testing has been done. And so the Pfizer vaccine, uh, the evidence demonstrates that two doses, 21 days apart, is what's needed for the best possible reaction. And by that, I mean the best possible immune response and the best possible protection. And so that's exactly what they're doing. They are holding that second dose to make sure that everyone who gets that first dose is actually going to get the second dose and be fully protected. Let's talk about the age, because this is recommended for not those under 16 years of age, and there's still testing to be done. So why roll out for the adults while waiting for the other testing to be done on the younger population? Absolutely. And so this is very common with medications and with vaccines is that we tend to test the adults first. And once the adults are approved and we know that the medication or the vaccine is safe, we continue on to test the other populations. And that often includes children, breastfeeding women or pregnant women. And so that's exactly what's happening here again is we have the evidence that it is safe and effective in the adult population. The only absolute contraindication is a previous allergy to one of the components or an allergic reaction to the first dose and the tests are currently underway and I think we'll hear news back within the next month if not sooner than that about the pediatric doses and how safe it is for the children under 16. There's no reason to expect it won't be it's just that we don't have the evidence yet. Got it. Let's talk a little bit about those allergic reactions that we saw in the UK uh, just last week. Um, what should people be asking their doctors now? Obviously, it's not going to be rolled out to the general population for months, but when it does, should they be consulting with their GPs? Absolutely. Whenever you're concerned, the best person to go to is your GP because they know you and they know the medicine. And so that's where we want to start. The only contraindication, as I said before, is an anaphylactic reaction to one of the components in it. And so the most common one is polyethylene glycol, which is actually a scary word, but it's in a lot of different foods. It's even in Tylenol, um, if you take liquid Tylenol or have ever used liquid Tylenol. And so you check with your family doctor, ask them if there's any reason for you to have a contraindication, any reason why you should be concerned. And if the answer is no, as it will be for 99% of the population, then I would suggest you go right ahead and get in line to get that vaccine. Okay. And Dr. Hill, you get a lot of people who say, let, let's talk about the flu vaccination, who say, I get sick when I get the flu vaccine. So do I have the same way of thinking when it comes to a COVID-19 vaccination? I don't want to get a fever or whatnot. What do you say to those people? Absolutely. And so it's important to differentiate the symptoms or the feeling of being sick from actually being sick. The symptoms of being sick are often related to your immune response kicking in. And so things like fevers and body aches, um, those kinds of things, the, re the reaction in the arm, that often makes you feel like you're unwell. But it actually is just your immune system kicking in and doing the things it would do if you were unwell. So you can expect a lot of the same things with the Pfizer vaccine for COVID. You can expect that there will be people who have a fever, there will be people who have a local reaction with redness, swelling, tenderness in the arm, those kinds of things, all very normal, but it's absolutely impossible for you to get COVID from the COVID vaccine. All right, Dr. Hill, some really great pieces of information. Your 
graciously going to stick around for us and answer viewer questions coming up in just a bit. Appreciate you staying online for us. Thank you so much. So if you have a question for Dr. Hill, please do give us a call. 1-866-267-3797. Feedback at breakfasttelevision.ca if you want to email us as well. That's coming up in just a few.